Hello and welcome back. It's been some time and I'm well aware of that. <laughs> um, this episode is going to hopefully show you guys, um, our girls and guys, <laughs> a glimpse into what creation can look like. And it all started with a leap. But here's the thing, the leap wasn't mine. <sighs> I just have to breathe through this because it's going to feel a, like a lot of energy moving through me as I go through this. Um, almost exactly a year ago, my best friend was over and we were I remember clearly we were in the pool and just talking and this subject came up about how does she kind of get her life back on track and we had a very deep conversation about um, that we have a choice in this life like you can come into each incarnation and decide how far you're going to take your work right like you can like coast as long as you want and there is no pressure to evolve in any way unless you feel like this feels like a box and I'm ready to go outside of the box so in her case um I said you know you don't have to do anything but in this life for everyone we have so much support around us that if you want to make changes in your experience of this reality there are, because the veils are getting thinner and thinner, we have so much, um, ugh, like I, the only way I can feel it is support or like imagine, I would call them your fractals that are visible to you the more open that you become. And then you realize like, I didn't, I didn't, I don't remember feeling this connected or this, um, this, what's the word? I keep thinking supported. <laughs> I don't, I can't think of another word. Uh, this supported or this held. Held is a good word. And when you feel that held, you know, you start to feel like I can feel what is in no longer in resonance. So then it starts to feel uncomfortable. So I told her, you don't have to do anything, but if you feel like you're unhappy and you want to make a leap into your own experience, here's how I could see it happening. And she had already been talking about moving to the East Coast. Um, it was something that she's been talking about for about 10 years. <laughs> so that I, you know, I was aware of. And she just couldn't quite see how to make that leap, like how to actually leave her comfort zone and do it. And um, at this point, she was in a job that she wasn't very happy with. She was living with her parents and she she had moved into her parents' house about eight years ago and was only supposed to be there six months because she was planning to move to the East Coast. Well, that didn't happen, and she ended up staying there eight years. And what happened is that she regressed back into this nurturing person that she is and just started to, instead of living her own life, started to reflect other people's experiences. So that looked like taking care of her sister's dogs cooking dinner at home, going shopping with her mom every one, every couple of days. Like, you know, like she revolved her life around the family unit. And in that she had lost who she wanted to be and who she was trying, you know, pushing herself to open up to become. So I just said, you know, if you take this leap, if you decide like now's the time and I'm ready to go to the East Coast, everything from that leap is going to open up for you. Now, if you, like, all you have to do is commit to it, and then you're going to see everything's going to start to fall into place. And she was like, well, how about if I move to the East Coast, could I live with my cousin for, for some time? And I, and I got the knowing that you can do that, but six months at max, because you what you'll do moving in with another family member and their their you know family is that you're going to do the exact same pattern which is to take care of others and because that's the pattern that you're trying to break or trying to move beyond it's not ideal for you but if you need a landing zone or a landing pad that's okay just know that it's not permanent you need to keep moving well within a week that girl <laughs> had 
a new job, which she had already been working remotely, but this new job came in out of nowhere. It was a huge increase in her pay and her rank. And it was like all of the pieces just start like lined up because that day she also had decided like, I'm picking a day to move. Like I, I'm going to do this. And she had told me then that it would be um, like the first or second week of January. And so once she made that commitment, this job came out of nowhere and pulled her out of the situation that she was unhappy in. And then it was like, oh my God, this this is a reality that now I can like feel into. So then we had, she got a new car because she was going to drive cross country. Um, she brought her dog with like, you know, she was pl- making the steps, planning all the, the pieces. And we had a going away party for her. I think it was the second week of January. <sighs> So because she is in my soul family, when she took that leap, it automatically raises my vibration as well as hers. And the reason is because if you think of yourself like this web of connections, right? Like we have these threads that are all out. And especially when you start to connect to your fractals, you're going to feel what they what they're brave in. Like you're going to allow yourself to move up as well. So she left and and she's always been my like security blankie and I talked about this many months ago where as long as I had her I didn't have the need to open up so much to others I I always was like okay you come over and we'll hang out all weekend or you know like we'll do our thing and it felt like enough for me so when she left the, the west coast and moved to the east coast it was like a I mean it was heartbreaking <laughs> for me but I also knew that it was the right move for her. So um, I remember like there were periods we didn't, when she first moved, like, cause she moved in with her cousin, we didn't talk for like, I feel like three months and that's her MO. Like she just, when she goes into a situation or a friend group or, uh, you know, she shuts out everything else and sh- her energy is fully present wherever she is. And I know that about her. So I tried not to take it personally and like that my heart was breaking and where is my best friend to help me through this? I knew I have to step back. And and it took me like, you know, I had moments with it, but I finally um, released it and was like, however, this is meant to play out in both of our lives, I trust. And it was during that time that, um, well, Leah came into my life. We had gone to Joshua Tree and I had this huge activation with Leah, which then like helped me to open up to others in a deeper way, um, not just uh, through my connections, you know, across the world, but also in my time, space, reality, location. And I started to realize like by me allowing a part of my fractal to let go, right, to create their own reality, and one that's so far away from me that I can't like peek in from time to time, I had space. And this space really opened me up to start receiving people in in a different way. And I know like I've talked about being super introverted and I am, but this, it's like I became all of a sudden kind of permeable where I could allow like and move through other energies and allow them in without feeling uncomfortable because my security blanket had already been taken away three months before. So now I'm like, okay, I'm out in the world and I'm okay, I'm on my own. Now who who's here, like seriously, like in front of me, like who is um, already knocking on that door to fill that void that I, like that I deeply felt. And it was like through many people coming in and then some like coming in for a week and going out and it was like, I, all my job was, was to be open. And, and like, if I got a sign that I needed to cultivate this relationship, I did it. No matter if it felt completely crazy, I, I went with every intuition and every nudge that I had. Some of those relationships ended up being deep healing for myself. Some of them became like deep uh, rooted friends and like, it just started to grow. So, so imagine my, my toroid and my, my, uh, my physical reality started to like go like this. It started to move. It started to like have like this permeable uh, vibe to it. So um, that went on basically through from January until July. 
Now, what also came up in this this time period is <laughs> right around March, I had gone my first time to uh, Leia came down to San Diego and we she had a, a, a breathwork ceremony at the beach. And it was that I, I think it actually was on the eclipse or right at the, the moment right before the eclipse. And I had this big energy moving through me, which was that my um, lineage wound, which was this seriousness and stoicism. And I think I talked about this because I shared with you guys the next day my face blew up and then it eventually over a week started to like recede. But through that, like letting go of all that, I don't know, inflammation or pus, it created a sty in my eye on my top eyelid. And as you guys have probably seen, this sty stayed with me for the entire eclipse cycle this year. <laughs> like, And I'm not kidding. I literally released it right before the solar eclipse that we just had um, in September. I think it would have been September. Um, so... It was a six month cycle of me releasing this stoicism of I've got it. Okay, I, I'm okay in my my body and in where I'm at. And I know now that if I can play and dance with with the vibrations that are coming in my life, then that's only going to enrich me. That's only going to make me like a better human being because I'm not only pulling from my own um pillar of light, but I'm allowing the other spectrums in. And then I can see myself reflected in the others. So that had been like, obviously, six months of learning this lesson. And this was happening for me in my 11th house. And it is the, the Leo constellation. So it all aligned. And I knew like, this is what I'm working with. And it's, it, you know, at times uncomfortable, but I'm still going forward. And I'm still moving through this lesson. So come July, Maureen said, okay, I found a place, but it is in this small um, like town that is a very touristy during the summer. And I can't afford it, you know, until off season, but there it's advertised for, I can move in October 1st and I can have it until May 1st. So I can have it in the off season. And in during the season, they rent this, uh, it's a two bedroom, um, like, doc house they rent this thing for four thousand dollars a week <laughs> so clearly not something she could afford but in the off season it was affordable so she's like so i get to move in october 1st when are you coming and so like i remember that day very clearly because i got on my computer and we were talking through it and i'm like okay i'm booking it now like i know that even though she can't be in my physical reality anymore or to the degree that we always, we had been. And there were many times throughout our lives that we didn't live near each other, but she always remained in my sphere. So um, I booked the ticket. I knew I wanted to be there for um, th uh, Halloween and I knew I wanted to go for a week. So I booked from uh, October 25th through November 1st. And then, and I she lives in Rhode Island. So I booked it to Rhode Island. And then that same day, I knew... I, I think at this point I hadn't introduced them yet, but I knew Faith, which who you guys have met on the podcast, she lives in Massachusetts. So I texted her and I said, I booked a ticket. I'm coming in, in October. Hopefully by then, you know, you and Maureen will have met and we can do something together. And in the meantime, like I actually, they may have already met. And the way that worked out is... Um, Maureen was saying she really needed community. She was like, I don't, I can't find anyone that will go to a sound bath with me. And I was like, oh, and, and the week before Faith had said, I know your best friend moved to the East Coast in, in New England. And if she wants someone to hang out with or do things with, I would love to do that. And I was like, oh, but Maureen is like, so like if she had to ask, I couldn't just offer that. So I waited and I just held that information. And so when she said to me, I, I asked all my cousins and no one wants to go to a sound bath with me. I'm like, oh, I know who's supposed to go with you. And she's like, who? And I was like, I mean, this new person that came into my life, she already offered. And she was like, what? So they had met before um, I booked the ticket. So 
that's that that was it like I was planning to go and and go to Rhode Island and um Maureen now lives like right on the ocean and we were just gonna you know hang out like a normal girls weekend but after I went to a a retreat in May which I've talked about it was the plant sound immersion uh, retreat and there I met, or we met Ginger, who Ginger became my bee mentor, and she is a local friend now and someone that I am, like, just in deep gratitude for that came into my experience. Well, one day she had me come over, and this would have been um, June, July, right around this time. No, it, was, it literally was the week <laughs> after I booked the ticket, now that I think about it. So I go over because she's she's like, I want you to help me extract my honey from the, the bees and you'll learn. And so I went over there and we're talking and I'm like scraping off the combs and, you know, we're doing the work. And she goes, I have something weird to, to ask you. And I was like, OK. And she's like, we're supposed to go see Faith in the fall. And I was like, uh, I am. And she's like, you are? And I'm like, yeah, I just bought a ticket. And she like, I gave her the dates and she bought her ticket the next day. So like what I'm trying to get across is this energy just started building. Like I, I, you know, like I said, I booked the ticket to go see Maureen, but already something else was happening. And Ginger is like, she will be the first to tell you that she doesn't know what she knows. (laughs) She's not conscious in a lot of ways because for her, she follows her intuition so succinctly that she doesn't look at that as like a gift, right? Like she's just, I mean, she's a beekeeper. She's got an orchard. She's got everything that you could imagine that has to do with the earth, like deep worth earth wisdom. She just already knows instinctively. So for her to say, we're supposed to go see faith. She doesn't look at that as being connected to the web. Let's, let's call it. Um, but I would be like, um, you, you picked up on the fact that I'm already going and you know you're supposed to be there. And she's like, "Uh uh-huh. And (laughs) that's being connected. And she's like, but I don't understand. And I'm like, that's because the mind is trying to understand. It's not the mind. It's intuition. It's following the flow. It's feeling into all of it. And she's like, okay. So she gets the ticket. And at that point, it felt like something's happening. So Faith tells us that on her land, uh, she she lives on sacred land, and um, it's called East, uh, East uh, Bridgewater, and it's part of the the oh my God, Bridgewater Triangle of Massachusetts. And if you are curious, because I know I, I'm curious all the time, there is a movie, a documentary on the um, Bridgewater Triangle on Prime, Amazon Prime, and you can kind of get a bigger picture of where we were being called to gather. So right away, I watched that movie, and it turns out that there was a lot of, um, well, it was an indigenous spot, and there were a lot of fights and wars, and there's a lot of dense energies that happen on this land. Now, I then instinctively thought, like, are we going there? Are we being called there to do some healing on the land? I don't know, but like something's happening. And so uh, we just like opened it up. So from that place, the next person that felt the call to come was Aisha, who you've also met. And she's like, if I'm coming, then we're making this a template for retreats. And we were like, wait, what? And this is what I want to say. This leap into this unknown territory could not have happened through any one person. It birthed through multiple people. And that's why I want you to understand that some growth happens with multiple leaps. It's like if this person, Maureen, can decide like she's not happy and she's going to make the the leap into the unknown, even if it's uncomfortable, but in her leap, it activated me. In my leap, it activated Ginger. And in Ginger's leap, it's activated someone else like it's just like so Aisha coming in and being like I booked my ticket but we're making this into something bigger and I remember feeling like wait what (laughs) because again none of us knew what what is this like all we know is that we're being called to gather we don't know so um once she came in it was like oh and she explained it like 
You guys, I've been knowing we're supposed to do this for a long time and we're supposed to hold retreats and this is going to be the template. Like this is, we're going to use this as the time to like figure out how we're doing it and what the offering is. And, you know, and I, and I was like, mm, okay. <laughs> so then, um, let's see. The next person that came in was Brandy. And Brandy uh, is like a mother of two. She owns a business. She's building, a, she just purchased a, a huge farmland and she's building a, a whole house and she's busy. Let me, I'm just putting it out there. She's very busy. And she wanted to make space for this. She knew that regardless of her experience and her reality, it was something that felt like this call that she could not just ignore. Now, from that, this other soul came in out of nowhere, kind of, Abby. Abby was like, um, I had worked with her. I had done a, a session with her and a healing session and an ascension uh, reading with her. And then also Aisha had worked with her. So what happened with her, she was very fairly new onto her journey, but having the activation from both of us at, at a very close period of time, it felt like she jumped light years into Ascension and I could see it. And I was like, uh, guys, I think Abby's supposed to be here. I, I feel that it's time, like she's ready. And like, it, it feels like I keep getting the knowing that she's supposed to be there. So Brandy and, and Abby live in the same state and they plan to meet for coffee one day. And I told Brandy, like, if you feel it, if you feel like she's meant to be there, let her know, like, tell her what we're doing. And, you know, we don't know what we're doing, but just tell her. <laughs> and Abby said yes right away. It was like, I'm, I'm 100% yes. Like, I don't care what we're doing. I'm coming. So that was the next person. And then <sighs> here's the thing. As this started to grow, we knew that it needed to hold 13. Now, 13 people on descending onto face land where she didn't have any, like nothing planned. She didn't, they live in a two bedroom, um, like it's an old farmhouse that's divided into three uh, condos, let's say, and they theirs is only two bedrooms. So <laughs> all of a sudden, it's like the energy just kept growing. And, and Faith, held the the center. She was like, uh, okay, I, I mean, I don't know how we're doing it, but I'm not going to say no, because like she, through her own process, had been opening up to learning and, and um, <sighs> being centered enough to open her herself, her womb, her experience, her reality. And this is something that she started working on right around the time I met her. Now, she did not expect us to descend on her like this, but she knew like something's coming and I, I, it feels right. So I don't know how this is going to shake out. I don't know what's happening, but okay. So we, we instinctively knew that it was in the bigger picture meant to be a circle of 13, but I didn't feel like the need to rush that and, and and collectively we all were like let's see who's coming in like who who does it feel like they're calling to this experience okay so first thing that happened is faith faith's mom alita offered to be the cook offered to to nurture us and so faith and i were having this conversation and i said she she feels like she's supposed to be there she's volunteering now, in a circle, no one does one thing. I, the way I would feel this is that we all cook together. We all provide the nourishment for each other. So you feel into, are you okay with your mom being a part of the circle? Because she, everybody does things out of nowhere, like asks or offers to volunteer because they know their energy is needed there. And Faith was like in this dance of, am I ready to fully open myself to my mom? Or am I going to like politely decline that offer? So she started working with that energy. And then it was right around this time that you guys know, I started working on rebuilding my altar. And as I was sitting there looking at the old altar, and I knew a mirror was supposed to come in. 
and I had seen that mirror and it was through um, someone in, in the energy tribe that her name is Nirvana. And I knew like she had said that she created it for someone else, but I, I was like, maybe she'll make me one. I don't know. So I had reached out to her. And I just, that was the dragon energy coming through. And I was like, uh, I don't, like, again, like, I I need this in my life. And it turned out that she was like, it's available. And she sent it, like, the next uh, Monday. And, and here it is. But in that exchange, I also knew, and I had been knowing this for some time, but she and I hadn't worked together. And I didn't, like, have this kind of in with her where I kind of could gauge where she was in her own process. So... I knew, like, I I just said, like, I I don't know what to explain, how to explain this, but something's happening in in October, and I don't yet know what it is, but if you're open to going on this journey with us, I I feel like you're supposed to be there, and it was so interesting, because her birthday was, like, in, in that time space, and she said, that's so interesting, because I just booked a ticket to go um, on Halloween to San Diego because she lives in Texas. And, and she goes, but I'm going to change it. I'm going to just change it. And I'm going to come out to Boston. And then afterwards, I'll go to San Diego. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what we're doing yet. But okay. <laughs> and so it was set that, that there were eight. And then after Faith worked out this, it, it, this feeling of like, is she really ready to go this deep with her mom? If you guys remember from when I interviewed her, she and her mom are creating or they have created a beautiful offering that's called Scratch the Deep. And they have been collaborating together for some time, I believe for two years on this creative project. So they already have done a lot of work together. But this next step would be like fully embracing her mom and letting her mom see that private self, you know, the the self of her that maybe, you know, we don't share with our parents. Like it was like a, but she got like came full circle and she knew okay, I'm going to put out the invitation, but not as a cook for us, but as a a participant. And Alita said yes. And that made the circle of nine. And there were a couple, uh, actually really only one other person that I had put the invitation out to. And I, like, I felt that it was a, a maybe it was a, I, I couldn't fully, this is the thing. When people come to my reality, I'm like feelers open (laughs) and I'm like testing the waters and I'll say something and wait to see if it's if it's picked up or if it's left behind I wait for that so in this case I had offered for one other person because remember we were saying ultimately is it supposed to be 13 and if it's supposed to be 13 like like we got to let the energy show us so I had put out this invitation to one other person and it turned out the very next day I Uh, something happened with one of her tires and she brought it to the tire store and it needed all new tires. And then I think there was something else too. But basically in this short period of time, the the finances that she would have used to fly out were like gone. So she was very clear to her, like this was the answer. So I was like, okay, that's totally fine. And, you know, I don't know, maybe we're doing these again. And then at this time, Aisha said to me, uh, I think the next one's going to be at your house and it's going to be for the spring equinox. And I was like, really? <laughs> but no joke, I added to my altar the date of the spring equinox. And that has been sitting on my altar for since that day that she said it. And it is the vibration. It's March 19th, 2024. And it's the vibration vibration of three. And I held it here as a, as like a space, like if this is meant to be, and if this is meant to be something bigger than just us gathering for the healing of this one land, I'm holding space as a, it is a potential reality for me. Okay, so the stage is set, kind of like again, we are we don't really we're all in this one chat group together, and we don't really know what's happening. So um, Faith is like, okay, guys, why don't me Aisha and and me and Gabrielle break off into a separate chat and start planning because we don't even know what we're doing. We don't know where this is going. (laughs) Like we got to feel into the energy. And I think it was that very day that I got the call that it was time for ayahuasca. And I talked about that in, in the video that I shared about that experience. 
Um, prior to that, I hadn't been called for almost a year. So um, I was like, okay, if, if the, it, I don't know, I'm, I'm ready, I guess. And um, right, I remember like it was only like a three day period before the ceremony. And in those three days, Faith had created the the another chat group, which was just the three of us. So it was Aisha, Faith, and me. And it was like, okay, guys, we've we <laughs> we know the container is nine. We know the dates. People have bought their tickets now. What is this? Like, w- w- like Aisha says, it's a template for something bigger. We're like, wh- where do we go from here? So we were like, okay. What like first? Let's talk about a name, and I think that's where it started. And okay, we we knew that it was supposed to be something about rainbows, a rainbow round table. Like we taught, we went through every kind of word, every kind of like combination of words, um, and it was kind of left like none of us really felt like that it had clicked in. I did get annoying. I remember before ceremony where I was like, guys, it has to be an A, an F and a G. And and I said that and I, but then I got like this kind of like, eh, I don't, I, blah, blah, you know, like, no, I don't think so. So, because we had already found an A and a G and we didn't, we weren't sure how, and I was like, it's an F, we need an F. <laughs> they were like, no, no. So I went to ceremony and I didn't really talk about this when I gave my um, experience in that ceremony, but I spent a lot of time working through like what was happening, what what was this gathering for, how to like, so let me take a breath. <laughs> I was shown, and this is how I, when I go into ceremony, this is how I'm, I'm experiencing it. What I will do is, and I've talked about this, I pull, open my heart to a particular energy. So let's say uh, it's Aisha first. And I like first send gratitude. I first hold my space open and connect with her through gratitude and love. And in that, once we're connected, I know we're connected because I'll be just weeping in the love that is between our souls. Now, when I when that exchange or that bridge is made, then I can go into that person's energy and start feeling into like whatever wants it the soul wants me to know. And I know this kind of sounds like an Akashic Records experience, but it's it's different in that. I feel, and this is how I would interpret it, I connect not through the the dimensional lives, I connect directly to the source of that soul. And that's where I feel the the like vastness of the connection between us through many experiences, not just on this um, planet, but many planets. And it was in that that I knew that Aisha was this energy that's called the Aurora. Now, if you guys have ever, you guys know I've shared the uh, Ascension Glossary, which it does talk about the Aurora there. It's something that had been coming up in my experience. And basically, it is the souls that came down into this time space reality to, to guide us and show us how, let's say, a new earth would be. Now, what that means is that they have a very strong connection to the universe and the cosmos, but they also are very deeply rooted, like rooted into the the earth so much so that they are one with the earth. Because it's like, imagine this, the only way that that these souls will know where we are going to in a new earth, they have to feel that pulse of the earth. So I knew that Aisha was an Aurora soul. And, and I, I like right away, I was like, yeah, this is obvious. This is the A, this is the A and the A, (laughs) which I might have touched on before. I don't remember is how we open up to creation and the bigger cosmos. Um, I talked about how there is a show and I had linked it before where if you look at all like the space programs, they all have an A. The A is like this, like if you think of it like an arrow or this energy that says, I'm, I'm, I'm this is how I feel it. <laughs> I'm humbled as I'm coming into these other dimensions. But it also like, think of it like a rocket ship because there's fire underneath it. And it's like, whoo. so the A is something that has the potential 
to really drive home something, but drive it up. And but it's also very stable, right? So it also is anchored very deeply. So I knew the A was first, like it, we have to be with an A. Now, also, the mystery school that I'm a part of, we it's called the etheric mystery school. And originally, it was spelled with an E. And when I got that download, I knew it needs to be changed to an A. And when I went down that rabbit hole, the uh, etheric spelled with an A is that cosmic connection versus the E is grounded here in this reality. So I knew this A before this time. So when Aisha presented herself as the Aurora, I knew, yeah, like that's the first word for sure. <laughs> now, Faith was a little bit more, it's so her energy is like full on love. Like if you, if you look into this woman's eyes, there's so much life behind them and there's so much like uh, nurturance and, and like being seen in a way that it, I most humans cannot ha have the capacity to hold. Um, so I knew in connecting with her energy that she was the womb and this is why we were being called to her land. And she was the, that F, whatever the F was going to be, had to be in the center. It was holding that space of the womb. Um, so then I was like, okay, if, if we need an F, what's the F? And it was like, it's Faith. And I was like, but, but that's her name. And what's so interesting is no joke, like maybe two weeks before this, Faith had started playing with a, um, changing the spelling of her name. Still being faith, but taking away the I and adding the E. So faith with F-A-E-T-H. And they showed me like she's already pulling away from the traditional spelling because she knows she's part of the Fae. Faith is her holding that womb space, but it's not just the, the womb. It's also the faith that it takes for a soul to know that this gateway is for them. And it was like, okay, okay. I was like, I, I don't know how they're going to feel, but I'll let them know. <laughs> and then for me, it was like, okay, we have the, let's say the rocket ship, the, the direct connection to the new experience of Aurora. Then we have the womb space. And the womb is so needed because for people to allow this portal to open, they have to feel safe. They have to feel nurtured. They have to feel seen. And imagine like, even if we're thinking about the actual uterus, a baby can only grow if all of the layers of the uterus are the womb. Like it's like this, you know, um, imagine the most like comfortable space to land in and it moves with vibration. And that's the importance of that womb. Because if the, if the womb is set, and that safety is is securely held there the potentials are limitless let's just say that so when i came to connecting in my own energy and like what am i cuz we had already been talking about it being something something gathering and i think we even had four words at one point and i asked like am i the gathering and they said no well they said that you could be that in third dimension sure that's it's a gathering. But what you're actually there to do is hold a gateway open. And I was like, okay, I mean, I know this, I already know I'm a portal for many things. But in this, if if we're talking about a retreat, like, we have the direction, we have the womb, and then we have the the portal of the gateway. So I went back to them because I like between ceremonies, you have a uh, you know, I went home. And so I was able to share this information with them. And I was like, guys, this is what I'm getting. And I don't know, like, you got to tell me how you feel. And right away, Faith had some resistance to using her name. And I was like, okay, I'll go back in tonight and see if there's any alternative. Maybe it's a third dimensional word. Maybe it's, you know, I don't know. So um, I went back in that second evening. And it was like, no, this is it. And then they gave me more downloads, which have to do with the hexagram and also the peacock. And I'm going to just, because that's still in the incubator of how this is going to open up and play out into this reality, I will just say that I was getting all of this information from the eyes, which I've talked about the eyes before, but they basically look like peacocks. And there's so many of them. And you're just like, 
um, you know, trying, I, I don't speak, I, it's just telepathic communication, but no, a knowing and a deep understanding that this is where it all comes from. So I knew that this energy, this like, um, how do we find the souls that are made for this gateway and made to go through? through this portal and they said that we will know through the peacock so they showed me um a way for us to start recognizing people in the world and to start playing with that that dance of like dropping a code and letting that person wait until the code blossoms within them so the way it's kind of unfolded is like everything is coded to a point and then you know we have to then have a presence and and like become into this physical reality. So I download all them about all this information. And right away, Aisha was like, well, we're not going to play in third dimension. So it's got to be a gateway. <laughs> I was like, yes, it does. So what's happening is like this, as this, these words came in, <sighs> faith, then she's said this, uh, she's been called a creatrix. And I mean, even that word, that what describes her is like so third dimensional. This woman took these three words and spent, I think, two days creating a brand package of what this could look like. And she started off with symbols. The first symbol for the Aurora was the triangle. It was, it was the A. Then for the womb space, she had the circle. And then for the gateway, it was a spiral. And then she started playing and dancing with how do these combine and how do these move and what, like, what does this look like? And she came down to one symbol, which is, funnily enough, this symbol of my necklace, which looks kind of like a teardrop. It also looks like a lotus petal. It also looks like a flame. And it also could be like a talking bubble. So we have air as well. And from there, she sent us like, uh, you know, this brand package, even down to the type and the color she had picked. Oh, she had asked us each individually, what color represents your word? Aisha said teal or gold, I believe. And I, uh, uh, well, we didn't know what Faith said, but now I know she said rose. And, um, and I said, I said first, um, I think I said pearl, white, pearl, or gold. Those are the colors that I see it as, a, as the gateway. So she pulls together this brand package where she's come down, like down to the logo and it's like, and here are the brand colors and we're going with this font because it, there are no capitals. It's we're humbled to this experience. We are just in flow with it and we're moving, letting the energy move through us. And I, <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? And we, I think we had like a couple of, well, we were talking about, it was originally these three flames of the three colors, which were teal, rose, and gold. And she had it like in a few iterations. And if you're on um, on YouTube, I'm going to be kind of showing you guys. So there were three flames. And I like, I kept like loving that it looks like a flame. It also looks like water drop, but it looked like something else too. And so I'm like Googling and I, I find that it's... Um, the lotus. It was the lotus. And and I, and then I sent Faith an image of a lotus flower and it had 13 petals. And it was like a normal lotus, you know? Um, so I sent that to her and I said, something's trying to come through with 13 and the lotus. This woman, <laughs> this creatrix, she heard, she heard that, oh, I mean, look, we've been talking. It, it's a circle. It needs to be a circle. I've talked about that so many times. It has to be a collective of energy. There is no leader. She pulled together this logo that it, it took the, the aurora of the colors from blue to rose to yellow and created 13 petals with an opening for the people to come in to the portal. And we were like, oh my God, that's it. That is it. Like, they're, they're, it's it. Like, it, and she's like, you guys, this is so crazy. But I didn't do anything. It just dropped in. And I, and she's like, normally if I do someone's branding, it take, could take months. This just dropped in and I'm just presenting it. And she goes, and also normally I give like iterations and things for people to decide. And this felt like this is it. Like, I don't need to give you guys different font types or whatever. Like, this is it. And we were just like, okay, this is it. Like she picked all the, the colors. It was just like, here you go. 
<sighs> okay. So from there, we were like, okay, this is official. So I got the, the dot com, auroraface.com. And within the, a day, Faith had created a website. And that website is like, I don't even, uh, <laughs> this is not my language. I'm like, just bow down to her in every way because she could capture where we were going without even knowing where we we're going because we physically don't understand where this is going still. We just know like, okay, if this is meant to be a template or an incubator for something bigger, like each person's going to hold a piece of that puzzle. So Faith starts doing the website and like there were like very few changes that there were any comments from any of us because it was like so perfect. And she just started playing and like through that, we got these these downloads about what was going to happen there and what we're doing and why are we being called together? And <sighs> then, um, let's see, we started to like, oh, we sent out a questionnaire to each of the ladies that were in this container of, of it, aside from us, it was six. And, you know, like there were... Faith had this knowing that we were going to ask individual questions of each of these of these women. And that would be a way that the rest of the circle would get to know these women before we actually landed. So on the website, like once you enter, let's say in this case, you'll see if you go to the website that that particular um, gateway, there's um, a button that you can click that says meet the pearls. And there, like people, like each person is set in a pearl and it's like a ring of pearls and you can click on one of the faces and you can get, like literally get to know this pearl before you even gather because I was the only one that knew everyone except Alita. And Alita came in because that's Faith's mom. Although she had emailed me before and we had some energy exchange, I hadn't physically met her nor through video or Zoom or anything. So from there, we knew, okay, if this is a circle and this is a gathering of the pearls, every pearl is going to contribute to the collective. It's not just us leading people through an experience. Like, this is going to be an open container that is going to allow that like playfulness and that safe space to launch from. So in the questionnaire, we asked like, are there any tools that you feel like you're called to share with us? And that could be anything. Like we were just like, let's just tap into their wisdom and see what wants to come through. Like th there is no answer. Like let's play with the energy. So everybody like basically replied that they had like different things that they could share. And, you know, some were like, I have nothing to share. And like, it was a whole gamut. So in some cases, we had to reflect to the person what they already naturally share. So um, from that, we created these profiles. And so each person could be seen by the collective. And we, from that, we created an agenda and, and I knew like going into this work and we were together five days, we had like a, a rough, like, this is what we would like to do each day, but it was by the hour. And I knew you guys, this is, this is just an outline because it's not, we're not going to be able to keep this. It's going to, we're going to have to let the energy flow and we don't know what we're doing. So we've got to like open it up and let it flow through us. And, um, and everybody agreed, you know, Aisha and Faith agreed, but we wanted people to have like an idea of what, what we were going to be doing and, and like, you know, for packing and weather wise and all of the things. And um, it's so interesting now from the other side of it is that that space of like, now I know going forward, there will not be an agenda. What we decided is we'll have a basket of offerings that we can to cl together collectively choose to do when there's space and time to do them. Um, because our schedule pretty much only lasted the first day. After the first day, everything got rotated and moved and changed and it was perfect. So um, so we had like, okay, this is what we're doing. This is like how we're going to bring everybody into the womb space. And now how do we make them really feel safe and seen and comfortable? And, you know, as we move through this, like there are some beautiful surprises along the way and like, ooh, like creations that happened and how are we going to help them understand what they're working through in this portal? And like, even that became this beautiful dance of like, we wanted to work with one Oracle deck and we wanted it to be like the perfect one that 
wouldn't influence the person in, in their mind. They needed to understand what they're moving through in a visual or a feeling. And so, <laughs> we, of course, Aisha found the perfect, perfect deck. And then there were like, okay, let's also bring in the element of um, water and air and this these senses. And so Faith was like, well, yeah, we need aura sprays. So we we collectively, uh, she found nine different auric sprays that would help support the person on their journey of what they were working through. And it was just like, oh, yes, 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 yes. And I mean, I'm not kidding you guys. Like every day there were new drops of information that how this was going to play together. And when I say that none of this came from our mind, I mean zero. Like I've never played and worked in a cohesive like alignment where when someone got a download, we were all like, yep, perfect. Like there were no questions. It was like full trust in each other to know that they were holding like if there's three, they were holding a very clear piece of that triad. And 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 I I remember in in ayahuasca, it was very clear that three, it needed to be three words to represent the three of us because we were creating a new grid. So um, it, there was no like pushing, pulling, like you do this. I No, it was like, I'll do this. You got that. I'll do that. Like it was like that. It just, we instinctively knew what each person's role was as this was being developed. Um, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm i just like, in a way, just a bystander in a lot of, I mean, in my experience of this whole, like, watching this unfold, it's been like the most, um, I mean, look, uh, if I had to say it was the most aligned um, collaboration I've ever seen experience, I've never even seen this modeled to me, like, I've never seen anything like this happen. So I could see like, okay, this is beyond us in a lot of ways. And all we're doing is to be taking the leap into the unknown. The The circle in the collective gathering came through us. Like we didn't choose any anyone. Like it just, we knew and then put out the invitation. And if it didn't align, it was set aside. But there was nothing that came from our ego saying like, this is what I want to do. So as we like got deeper into this experience of how will we receive people? What is, what are, what is the plan? Like then in came my trip to New Mexico and it was there that I got the first like really download of what we're doing. So, um, I told you guys, we went to the white sands national park. And while I was there, I you know, I laid in the sand and I felt the sand and I communed with it. And as we left that, that where I laid down, we were in the, in the van. And I said, this sand is different than the, than the dunes that we saw in Colorado. And Richard's like, yeah, it is different. Like you don't sink in it when you walk, it's like more solid, but it's still like completely sand. So I'm like, something's different about the, the makeup. So I start, I Google on my phone, what is the white sand made of? And it's selenite. It's 100% selenite. And I was like, right there, I got a download. This is the catalyst for the gateway. And I was like, oh, okay, like, <laughs> what does that mean? So um, I was like, babe, I think we're supposed to get the sand. And he's like, well, this is a national park, but it's already like dark out. So he's like, well, let me pull over. <laughs> No, no. I, I, I'm not going to confirm that I got anything, but I knew it was the catalyst for this gateway. So I was like, okay, you're letting me know that this is for us. So um, I, as I got the sand, I got other downloads. I Well, first I told you guys, I started throwing up and then I got my period and I got the download that my vessel and this is just my my part of this, has the openness, and that, this is how I would describe it, because it's not me consciously doing anything. But my vessel is wide enough that I can hold the gateway open. So this catalyst, this selenite sand, I knew was the thing that helps me open up, because here's what I got as a download. The, the white sand... And this is no coincidence that this is where the first atomic bomb was set. It's able to hold a frequency of the cosmos. Like if you think of um, the, the crystals of this planet, it holds a steady vibration for, let's say, 
watches or computers, but the white sand, it's able to hold a much higher vibration and it's steady. It's not like, like if you think about why do we have so many crystals around us, it's so that we can hold a steady, um, like cohesive vibration. So the white sand was literally taking that up a notch because if I'm going to open a portal, I need to have a direction to go through. And that's, <laughs> this is the download that I got. And I was like, okay, wait, and what what exactly does this mean? And like, and it was like, you're going to, well, through my own body, I was jumping a timeline. But gathering together was opening up a big enough portal that we could make that jump together. Um, <laughs> a lot of this, guys, I have to say, I don't, I don't want to say it sounds crazy, but at the same time, it was all new to me. So I'm like, okay, like I, I've gotten to the point in my journey that I, especially when I don't know something, I'm like, okay, I know nothing. Show me. I don't know anything. I'm just here as a, like a bystander and I'm trusting. So I knew that that sand was the catalyst and, and it was very clear that it was going to be part of the, the earth altar that we created. So I knew that. And then um, right away, I told the girls and right away, Aisha was like, uh, can I have some of that sand to go after the retreat? And that made me know, OK, this is for everybody to have as a as something to bring home to their own altar. So I used the sand also to create um, vials for the people that were in this um, collective container. OK, so I knew, OK, we're, we're jumping timelines. OK. I, I get it. And then it was very clear. I put on this necklace. And so this necklace says, nothing is forever. I leave myself to God. And it's in um, Arabic. And I had gotten it uh, like at the very beginning of my ascension journey. It's made of green agate. It's um, It was originally a guitar pick that Pontea, my first healer's father, made into a pendant. And right when I saw it back then, I knew it was part of my journey. Now, there were like a big portion of my journey that I did not feel called to wear it. But as this dropped in about the white sands, I knew I needed that pendant. So I like found it in my jewelry box and I put it on and I knew, I didn't know why. I just knew like this was the one that was going to bring me through the portal. And then I also put on this necklace that Richard had given me um, years ago and it has um, five little diamonds on it. And those represent the, for me, the because this came in at a time that this was happening, the miscarriages that I've had. So um, I didn't know why, but of course I got a download <laughs> that as you jump a timeline, you have to take with you the the teachers that you have had, that you've had up to that point, like the wisdom keepers that have helped you through that up to this point of jumping. And that, that was the case of this, this pendant. I also wore the bracelets that I um, received f f from Zanita because she's also been a big mentor of mine. Um, but the Richard, these diamonds were part of, because I'm carrying him also through that portal. So I knew, okay, so I let the group know, you guys, you need to carry something from that you, with of importance that you, you hold through someone in your life that you feel is a teacher, it needs to be there with us at the portal. So I kind of like was seeing that, okay, yeah, I, and that makes perfect sense. Like you can't say I got here alone. Like even if I don't have a main teacher now, I've had people along my path that have helped guide me into this opening. So, and I, I still feel really called to keep it on. So I will see, <laughs> but right now I feel like it's a part of me again. Um, so the stage was set and it was like, oh wait, I forgot to say up to this point, I've met both Faith and Aisha, but Aisha and Faith had never met. And I knew that they needed to form that bond. And I think they knew it as well. So it was planned that I would go and stay with Maureen at her place for a couple days while they bonded and had time to really connect with each other because I knew that it has to be a triangle. I cannot hold, you know, like it has to be a three-way thing. And you know, what's so funny. 
what I felt when I saw them together is they are literally twins separated at birth. One's holding the very feminine, one's holding the very masculine, and they are one. And I was like, oh my God, like if I... The, the, like if I had to choose children in this lifetime, and I think they're also the exact same age, these would be them. Like they hold both polarities and then combine in unity so perfectly when together. And it's just like this dance that I got to sit back and just admire. So I would like, uh, you know, for me personally, it's like, uh, it's everything. Um, Okay, so I, I mean, I know this is getting long and I want to take you just, I'm going to just take you a step into the portal and then I'm going to wait until hopefully in the next episode, I'm going to have them both on so that we can go into the portal together. But what I want to say right away is that before I even left my house, like I was at a doctor's appointment and I got this download like, there's this energy of the this this website that's called divinewarriors.com and it had been in my field for some time and they basically they have angel wing kimonos and i knew like oh my god they they feel amazing but it's not time well like maybe a couple weeks before i was leaving I was just got this knowing like, go back, go back. And of course, then I start digging into because I'm not going to just buy something if I don't feel it. Like I need to know, like, (laughs) why am I feeling it? Well, I go to the about section and it turns out that Archangel Gabriel channeled these kimonos and the person that they channeled through are she lives now in Bali, they're hand painted, they have so much um, Oh, let me just feel into that. (laughs) They have so much resonance of a higher being that is incarnate on this planet. And it's like, can you, meaning me or others, even get to a place of being feeling at that vibration that you can hold wearing that down the street? And I had a put it, I have this bowl that I put things in now that if I, it it feels like a call, but I'm, I'm on this, like, I'm going to wait until the end of the month to, to actually go into the bowl and pull one thing. So I put it in the bowl. Well, the next day I got another email from them and I was like, oh. okay. So I ended up knowing that I was supposed to order one of these kimonos and it's um, amazing. It's like this pearl white color and it has rainbow um, wings. But as I ordered the one that I ordered, I got an email back a couple of days later that said, oh, we're out of that one. Would you be OK with this one instead? And it turned out that the one that they had that was available for me was, again, the pearl color. But the wings on the back are literally the colors of AFG. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's the one. OK, <laughs> so I I purchased that. And then I was sitting a, days later after I had received the, that kimono, I was sitting in the doctor's office and all of a sudden it was like, go back to the website. They have your colors there. And I was like, wait, the colors of AFG. And I was like, because there's not many colors. Maybe there's like, I don't know, eight. So I'm like, OK, I'll go look. So I go on there. And sure enough, there's one called Ice Blue, there's one called um, Musk, and there's one called Golden. And they are literally the colors of our logo. And I knew they're for us. Like, this is why that energy started coming in. It's We're not here to hold this portal without the Archangel Gabriel. And, you know, I've gone through my whole arc of understanding that I do embody a fractal of that energy. But if someone else that holds the same fractal is able to give us a physical wardrobe to wear, like, uh, yes, like it's a whole thing for me. So it was a yes. So I got the, I ordered the kimonos and when they arrived, I was like, oh my God, I can't hold it. I can't wait to share this with them. Like I, I couldn't, I was like, I have to share it. So I took a picture of them and I, I sent it to the to the other two, to Aisha and Faith. And right away, Faith is, or I mean, not Faith, uh, Aisha said, I'll take the gold one. And I was like, oh, interesting. Like, because I thought that it would be very obvious, like that the, the colors were representing the words and that these were the words that we were there to embody. And I was like, interesting. I don't have an attachment, but the way that I purchased them was that Aurora was blue, uh, uh, faith was rose and the gateway is golden and and we it opened up this is how perfect love I mean I'm gonna say love but 
timing and oh, it's just so perfect because if I would have waited to give those kimonos on the day of the retreat, we would have missed a full blown, um, I don't, it's not, it's, it's like an opening into someone's soul. So Aisha then started dancing with me about what was coming up for her and where we like, we were able to have the time to go into it, to get her to understand that she actually is the flame and it's the blue flame <laughs> and it's so much power. Like she's always felt like she holds so much power that she can't fully unleash it. So her automatically wanted to go to the gold, which is the light, like shining the light where I automatically would have wanted the pink because I love being the womb and it's like there we are being called to step into a an energy that doesn't feel natural but it's where the 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 portal is taking us and it was this dance of like moving through and it took like I don't know maybe three or four days to get to the full embodiment and the full ex acceptance of this trifold flame of the Aurora Faith Gateway and what each one of us was bringing. And there is nothing like, I know I'm talking a lot about the colors, but it's a dance and it takes all the spectrum for this gateway to open. But in this case of this representation with the, with the angel wings, it was like, okay, well, let's talk about it. Like, and, and it was so like, um, at one point, very obvious that the way something Aisha said to me, I felt like, okay, instead of you just wanting the gold, which I would happily give her the gold, because actually I didn't even have any gold clothes and she didn't have any blue clothes and Faith had no pink clothes. So we clearly could not see ourselves in these colors. But I was like, what, what comes up for me as you're talking is that you're not wanting to see your own light. And so that's why we went down that path together. And, and I explained like, look, I don't want the gold. Like I'd rather have pink. <laughs> but the funny thing is, is through that dance, Faith held steady. She was like, I I'm okay with anything. Doesn't matter. So, um, when we got to the land, I got there, um, the night before everybody arrived and, I'm going to share this beautiful image of the three of us joining our energies together into this beautiful gateway and knowing that we had no idea where it was going to go and how it was going to unfold. But I will say that, and, and this is where I'm going to leave you on a little bit of a cliffhanger, which is the F, because <laughs> that's where you have the, the diving board that you have to jump off, jump off of is... When we stepped, everybody arrived around midnight on Friday, or so it would have been Saturday at midnight, I guess. Once they came in, they came in one car together from the airport, and once they stepped in, times changed. And, and I'm going to say this like very seriously because I'm still working through what happened, but we were able to bend time from that moment that they stepped into the house, the next five days... If you, and and you, I, we hope to have reviews from these women, but it felt like a month. We had a month together, and we were so um, in sync and aligned with each other that we didn't sleep. A couple of us had to sleep, but the rest of us, like we were so like aligned with the energy that was coming in through the whole portal. That like I slept an hour each night for like three nights in a row. And I didn't feel tired. It was like, no, I want to be awake for every single second that I have with these fractals of myself. And the first day felt like it was three weeks and literally 24 hours. So the time that we had to go so deeply into each other, into every activity, every experience, it was like... You know, I had been really struggling with time. And part of my questionnaire was asked, like, how do I handle time or, or something about that? And I was saying I'm having a really hard time with time because for me, when I sit in my office, it goes by in a flash and I don't know how to grasp it anymore. I was feeling like, and this is how it was shown to me, 
when you're in a timeline, you have like right when you jump into a new timeline, you're at the slowest end of it because that's what your energy can hold on to, right? So time will start to stretch out. But when you're at the high octave of that timeline, time is like, like I could not grasp it. It felt like the sands through an hourglass and I've been like trying to hold on to this, 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 and I couldn't. Like I was literally losing days within an hour and I didn't know what happened that day. So that's something. And in my profile, I said, I, I'm hoping to learn how to start bending time. Well, that's what happened. In my reality, and I, I believe everyone else's because we did speak about it, time started bending and stretching and changing throughout this portal. And the thing that I am so grateful for now is that it's it stayed that way because now we're at a new timeline at the lowest vibration of that timeline. So now it's stretched out again. And now we're holding a, a frequency that I don't need to rush. It can be way slowed down. Like as I'm recording this, I've already done a zillion things today and I just looked at the clock to see what time it is and it's 1.11. Normally, this would be like 6 p.m. because my day's already been gone and I don't know where it went. So now it's like I have the space. And even when my my mind tries to chime in and being like, how am I going to get this all done today? I take that step back and I say, you will get this all done today because time doesn't exist anymore. I get to choose my time. So in this portal, this is what happened. Time was stood still and it was expanded and it was contracted and it was like this living, breathing thing that I have never experienced before. The other thing that I want to say here is that I've had many experiences in my life. I've had many retreats in my life. I've had like plant medicines and worked with healers and I've done a lot of things. This week for me, was the best week of my entire life. And and it wasn't because I was controlling or leading or anything like that. It was because I received the energy from my fractals all at once in one space, time space reality and I was present for it. And for me, and I know for most of the, or I don't know, I'm not gonna say everybody cause I'm not, I don't wanna put that out there, but like, I, the reflections that I got back during this portal were the same. Like there was nothing that held each person as deeply as this experience did. I know that when we look at the logo of AFG and the 13 petals and the openness to receive others at all times, it's because we're ra- welcoming home the fractals that we are. And so when we gather, we are able to stop time and really feel into each other and the healing that needs to occur. Because let me tell you, each one of us had massive healings that needed to happen. Each one of us were crying. Each one of us were laughing, dancing, like everything that you could imagine happening, it happened. And it was the most beautiful dance to go from your experience to then holding another in their experience and then needing to be held by those very same people that could see you in a light that you couldn't see yourself even just the day before. And it's like, oh, like, oh, so much happening. (laughs) So um, I know this has been like all a lot of information. I haven't spoken about it as it's been leading up because I didn't know what it was. Now I'm very clear. It's a portal of jumping timelines. I think each experience is going to be completely different. I already know because the next one is set for the over the um, the spring equinox in March. I think it's the March 14th through the 19th. And this one will be held on my land. And it's going to also be plant medicine. So already we know going into this portal, it's going to be first a deep healing and then an opening. And in the one that we just came from, it wasn't, it, there were, um, we had the offerings of, of some plant medicines on the altar if people felt called, but it wasn't like a, a plant medicine journey in any way. So what I know is that some offerings will be very deeply in the in the medicines. Others will be just gathering and letting the energy happen naturally without the assistance of the plants. Um, we're letting the energy decide, really. We don't, we don't know. But the way that I knew that plant medicine was supposed to come in in March is that when I went to that ceremony if, a month ago, um, I had the conversation with my shaman, and it was 
from her, it was a yes right away. There was like no, and so she's going to come over um, now that we're in, what month are we in? Now that we're in November, she's going to come over and start communing with the land. And there's also many things that are happening on the land itself to prepare for March. And I'm holding that space, which feels so much bigger than I can hold in a reality that I know I'm not doing it alone. And I'm allowing other people to come in and and help guide how that is going to play out. But ultimately, this land will be the the main hub of all the healing and then we will see where like i i believe there's one in the summer which will be in canada so we're just allowing the energy to show us where we're meant to be guided um on top of that right now we're thinking that it would be the 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 solstices and the equinoxes so for sure the four times of the year um, but we're also open to even doing them more often. So it will just literally, we're going to let the energy show us what, when, what, where, how, and we don't know. <laughs> and I would say like, it feels like the most beautiful dance with spirit. And when you let go and just take that leap, you are like, it, this is like full blind trust into letting the energy catch you on the other side and I'm just so honored to be a part of it and also to welcome you all into the circle and um, if you are curious and want to dive deeper uh, there already is an Instagram page which is Aurora Faith Gateway and there's also a website Aurora Faith Gateway that you can start vibing with and also exploring Um, there is a, you, an email address which is on the website that you can reach out and let us know that you're interested when the information is ready for the March Gateway to open because this will be um, a there will be a process of intake meaning we will meet with you and go over where you are in your own journey to feel into are you called to this experience so the other thing is that we are going to create such a tight container each time that each person that is into that circle each pearl that arrives into that circle is for you this is not going to be a we welcome 30 people and then everybody gets lost in the crowd that is not what we're creating here this is a reuniting of soul family in the deepest way. This is also open to males and females. And this we knew from the very beginning. However, in the incubator, there weren't males that energies that were ready for this popping open. And but while we were in the container, one popped in in a big way and is going to I'm I'm holding space that they will be there at the next gateway. Um, because we need to hold both. We need the masculine perspective and the feminine perspective perspective to find the unity in the middle. At Faith's house, it's so interesting. Her partner was not with us in the container, but he was around the land and around and holding his energy around us throughout the weekend or the week. And we felt it. And there is no container that... um, would be complete without both energies. So uh, I'm I like ah, it makes me so excited because I I can feel the energy of healing that is going to happen through these portals, and I'm just like whew, so excited to bring you guys on the ride. And hopefully, again next weekend or next week, I will have the the full circle or the triangle of the AFG, so that there's many perspectives that can come in because I can only give it from mine. <laughs> so. I love you all and I will see you soon.